All right. Well, our, our Muslim friend said that there are no contradictions in the Quran. Now, I believe that you can, you know, by some stretch, reconcile some of these. I don't think some of these can be uh, reconciled. But think about what he said. There, there are no contradictions in the Quran. Let's look at a few difficulties, and surely one of these would qualify as a contradiction, if not all of them. How long did it take Allah to create the universe? Simple question. But according to Surah 754, it took six days. According to 2559, it took eight days. What did Allah create first, the heavens or the earth? 229 says that the earth was created first, then the heavens. While 79, 27 through 30 says that the heavens were created first, then the earth. Who was the first Muslim? 614 says that Muhammad was the first Muslim. 7143 says that Moses was the first Muslim. And yet the Quran also declares that Adam and Abraham were Muslims. The Quran tells us in 1047 that Allah sent a messenger to every nation. Messengers have come to every nation. Surah 2 125 through 129 tells us that Abraham and Ishmael came to Arabia. They built the Kaaba, and yet Surah 2846 claims that Muhammad was the first messenger who came to the Arabs. Mm. According to Surah 448, committing shirk is unforgivable. And later in the same Surah 153, Maha uh, Allah forgives people for committing shirk. Surah 262 says that Jews and Christians don't need to fear because we will be accepted by God. Surah 385 says that the only religion accepted by Allah is Islam. What is man created from? 1967 says that man started from nothing. 96, 1 through 2 says that, many, uh, that man was created from a clot of blood. 2130 says that man was created from water. 164 says that man was created from a small seed. 1526 says that man was created from clay. 359 says that man was created from dust. 1161 says that man was created from earth. Will intercession be possible on the day of judgment? Surah 2, 122 through 123, 651, and 82, 18 through 19 say no, while 20, 109, 34, 23, and 43, 86 all say yes. What happened to Pharaoh when he's chasing the Israelites? 1092 says that Allah saved him. 72, 103 says he drowned. And of course, we have many abrogated verses of the Quran, verses that were later canceled by other verses. Surah 2, 256 says that there is no compulsion in religion. Surah 929 says, fight those who believe not in Allah. Surah 415 says that the penalty for sexual sin is house arrest. What's the penalty for sexual sin according to the Quran? House arrest. Unless you turn to Surah 24.2, which says that the penalty for fornication is 100 lashes. In Surah 4.3, Muslims are clearly allowed to drink alcohol, provided they don't show up for prayer drunk. Surah 5.90 forbids Muslims from drinking any alcohol. Now, now, now think about this, please. Think about this. You're, you're saying there's no contradiction. Now, Muslims will usually apply abrogation and say, well, yes, this verse was revealed. But then uh, later on, Allah, um, Allah came up with some other sort of revelation. Think about this. According to the Quran, th this Quran at one point was perfectly preserved in heaven. And according to the Quran, there are no discrepancies or contradictions in its text. And yet, before any revelation of the Quran was ever given, as the Quran was eternal in heaven, the Quran had two claims. One, the penalty for sexual sin is house arrest. And two, the penalty for sexual sin is 100 lashes. And there's a third claim. There's no contradictions in this book. You can't appeal to abrogation here and say God revealed one thing then and one thing later. This is before anything was revealed. As the Quran stood in heaven, it gave two contradictory penalties for the same sin. And at the same time, there was another claim saying in this book, there's no discrepancy, no contradiction. If you don't see this as a problem, I don't, I, I don't know what you would see as a problem. But once again, we find that Muslims believe one thing and yet their text... Uh, says something completely different. And if we return uh, back to the issue of the preservation of the Quran, uh, we've only touched on, a, on, on uh, you know, a couple of little minor details. There are much more massive problems going on here. Sam pointed out a very easy... What do you do with this one line? What do you do with this one line? No answer. Yeah, you can't, you can't handle one little line. What do you do? What do you do with Sahih Muslim, which declare Abu Musa, one of Muhammad's companions, declares that they forgot two entire surahs of the Quran. Not that they were abrogated. They forgot them through hardness of heart. They said they hardened their hearts. They got sick of reciting the Quran, and they forgot two entire 
surus. If you can't handle one little line, what do you do with two entire chapters missing? And still, Muslims will look at that and say, perfect preservation. Well, what do you mean by perfect preservation? If you have missing chapters, missing paragraphs, miss missing sections of chapters, entire missing verses, missing phrases, what do you mean by perfect preservation? Because it's not clear at all. David, you know what your problem is? You're just completely ignorant of Islam. <laughs> Uh, this is what the Muslims are telling us. Does this man sound like an ignorant person? I haven't heard one Muslim come with one-tenth of the verses that he just quoted from the Quran he, he cited. So come on, bring your evidence. I mean, uh, what are we now? 0 for 2, how many Muslims? We had two Muslims. Yeah. 0 for 2, Muslims have not given us one shred of evidence to prove that the Quran that you have today is not corrupted, even from the time of Uthman, let alone to say from the time of Muhammad. So I hope that we can have a Muslim that will come on and will give us a better argument than the previous two. And let me tell you, it wouldn't be that difficult.